Dave, the resident I spoke with today says while there are no definite answers right now, she does say it's possible that the building may need to be torn down. The sound of that is just like, oh my God, it really is that bad. So that's that overwhelming feeling that you're kind of in denial. Julie Slade has lived in the fairways at Woodfield since 2018. She tells me her complex is full of apartment buildings, but there are also three condo buildings on the land. Her building, the one that caught fire, being one of them. Yeah, it is still very... Uh overwhelming. I mean, I literally came back here at this time. I was over here earlier. I came back again, hoping I would see somebody with a little more information about being able to get in maybe on Friday. Right now, the 1400 block where the fire took place has padlocks on the front door, preventing anyone from going inside. They are not typically there and they truly are there because they do not want people thinking they can go back in. And I believe each condo unit is padlocked as well as a safety measure. Slade tells me the hallways were flooded with water Tuesday and the building currently has no power. Luckily, Slade says her and many of her neighbors were not home when the fire started. Coming home to this was just bizarre. Grambling Township Fire Chief Robert Burdett says the building has 24 units and all of them were damaged in some way, either by water, smoke or fire. He says everyone was able to get out of the fire safely along with their pets firemen were great. They were truly heroes. Residents were asked to make other sleeping arrangements while investigators worked to determine what started the fire and what the next steps are for the building. Red Cross put us up at the Comfort Inn right over on uh, uh, Hill Road and for two nights and then people were going to figure out what they're going to do from there. Standing in the middle of the apartment complex right now. Now to my left, you can see that Grand Blank City Fire Department has their emergency trucks out with all of their equipment. And just ahead, you see the ladder where they're already put out the fire, I'm told, and they're just checking for hot spots. Now I am told by Grand Blank Fire Chief that everyone got no out okay. Right no one, uh, to his knowledge, was hurt, including his department. Now, he says more than 10 units were damaged. He didn't go into detail about the significance of it, but it is fair to say that no one will be staying here tonight. We spoke to the woman who called 911. She says that she knocked on one door. No one was home. She ran across to the hall where she uh, was able to rescue or at least alert an elderly woman. We all ran out, though. None of the kids had shoes on, no coats. You know, oh, yeah. we just ran out. He had no shoes on and um, sat on that cold cement floor. A Sanford couple lost everything in a house fire. Mid Michigan House Chloe Godbold talked with the family and tells us what the community is doing to get them back on their feet. You can see behind me of what's left of the couple's home after that devastating fire. Now they look to rebuild with the help from the community who they've helped for so long. This was the fire from last week that tore through Fred and Eleanor Post's home of about 25 years. The Post family tells me they lost everything, which just can't be replaced. A lot of her mother's dolls that we had on the mantle and stuff that meant a lot to her, you know, they really can't be replaced. And all my military pictures and uh, my accommodations and letters from the, signed by the president can't be be replaced so it's it's tough. They tell me they don't know how the fire started, but it did start in their kitchen. They say their grandkids, granddaughter, and her boyfriend were also inside of the home at the time of the fire. The family is thankful everyone made it out alive. Both Fred and Eleanor say not only did they lose lifetime memories, but they also lost their furry companion, Speedy. He was my buddy. We would go for walks in the woods, and we did everything together, so... Our travel. Uh, he was never treated bad, never outside in the cold. And he had his own Facebook page, Speedy's Adventures, because he traveled with us. Through all of this, they remain strong. And to help get them back on their feet, the community has come together. Gail Westfall is a former colleague of Fred's who started a GoFundMe, which has already reached over $4,000. I just think it's really great that these communities can come together and support the people that helped founded those communities and, and give to the communities themselves.
Friends, David Yar and Mark Cloas say Fred and Eleanor have done so much for Sanford American Legion Post 443, a nonprofit that provides assistance to veterans, military personnel, and families in the community. They say the day after the fire, both Fred and Eleanor were at the post feeding and helping others. The day after the fire, they were here helping with, um, with bingo. Fred ended up bringing a smoker over here in Australia because they didn't have no electricity and uh, smoked two turkeys for the, the ladies at the bingo. Uh, Eleanor has put uh, 15 to 25 years, somewhere in that time frame into our bingo and other events that we have here. And, uh, you know, two great people. I can't thank everybody, you know what I mean? All I can do is just tell them thank you very much. And uh, I hope this never happens to any of you. Now, the couple does tell me they are planning to rebuild, but they don't know when that'll happen as of now. They are just trying to take one day at a time.